Peace be with you. Let me start this epiphany homily with a family story. My grandmother came from a German-speaking family of 15. All girls, except for the three kings. My grandmother resented her three brothers being treated like kings, and their names are my three uncles, great uncles. These are the German names, Gaspar, Balthasar, and Frank. I don't know what happened. <laughs> we think that perhaps there was a Melchior who died in childbirth. Balthasar, Uncle Balzer, we called him, he was the fattest man I ever met. He ran two sausage stores in Yakima. That might account for his great weight. When I was about four or five, we were celebrating Christmas at my grandmother's house uh, on South 14th in Yakima. There was a knock at the door. Santa came. I was a bit frightened, but I was very pleased that Santa brought me an entire fleet of Tonka trucks. I know, I just dated myself saying Tonka. Then Santa started to talk to my grandmother in our distinct German dialect. Santa had the same size and the same build as Uncle Balzer, too. Santa speaks German. I let that thought roll around in my head. Well, with this Feast of Epiphany, how might we understand this Christmas season? Each language, each culture has a way of unwrapping a different meaning or a richer meaning of this season. In English, we take for granted the word Christmas. Many suggest that this is simple contraction of two words, Christ and Mass. We begin and end this Christmas season with the birth of Christ and the baptism of Christ. Yet a Mass, with Mass, celebrating Christ's entry into the world and remembering his consecrating the waters of baptism in the Jordan. Christmas. Now, auf Deutsch, when we say Merry Christmas in German, it's Fröhliche Weihnachten. Or our dialect is Fröhliche, Fröhliche Weihnachten. You want to try that? Repeat. I'll let you do it in the dialect. Fröhliche Weihnachten. A little of Uncle Balzer's schnapps and you'll be just fine. Like English, the word in German has two parts. Wei means blessed or consecrated, and Nacht means night. I suspect the German custom of our opening gifts on Christmas Eve after Mass might be tied to the fact that the night of Christ's birth is a consecrated night, a blessed night, a holy night. For in the night, Christ's birth dispels the darkness of sin and death. The Spanish greeting, and my Spanish is much better than my German today, we say, Feliz Navidad. Now you know that from the, you wanna try that? Feliz Navidad. A little louder so my folks in Yaka can, can hear you. Ah. Feliz Navidad is a direct reverend, a reference to the nativity. Yet the Spanish root comes from the verb navegar. It's a nautical term. Christ comes in the flesh. So from the first moment of his birth, we can follow him. We can navigate. We can navigate life through trials and temptations. It is as though the three kings are the first navigators. They teach us how to follow the stars. And like the Magi, we have much to navigate. 
We're still in the grips of a serious pandemic. We navigate a mental health crisis, an addiction crisis. We navigate through homelessness, an opiate epidemic. Yakima at one point had the third highest rate of opiate overdose in the country. As Bishop, I navigate through the complexities of an immigration system that's broken, where perhaps a fourth of my parishioners are undocumented. We watch migrants and refugees flee the violence of Central America, jumping on trains, it's called La Bestia, riding in truck trailers, trying to reach the north. We navigate in a climate that sometimes lacks empathy and effective public policy on the most basic matters of health and welfare. Working with our own health department in Yakima County, I'm struck by the harshness of emails that come into our health, public health officials. We navigate in an environment of social distrust, of political polarization. But our mission is to navigate as Christians. Perhaps this is why Pope Francis wants us to navigate differently. In his most recent encyclical, Fratelli Tutti, he writes, let us dream then as a single human family, as fellow travelers sharing the same flesh, as children of the same earth, which is our common home, each of us bringing the richness of his or her beliefs and convictions, each of us with his own or her own voice, brothers and sisters all. Tutti fratelli. That phrase, brothers and sisters of all, literally translates from the original Italian of St. Francis of Assisi, fratelli tutti. It comes from his prayer, the Canticle of Creation. So profound was St. Francis of Assisi's devotion that he's credited with introducing the custom of the nativity crash. One Christmas Eve, he prepared a manger scene in a forest near Greccio, complete with an ox and a donkey, and gathered all the people around it, and then preached to the mysteries of the poor king, the babe of Bethlehem. He wanted his worshipers to see themselves as brothers and sisters to the Holy Family, and therefore brothers and sisters to each other. St. Bonaventure writes that witnesses reported that the Christ child appeared in the manger and was embraced by St. Francis that night. Gaspar, Balthasar, Frank. Maybe Frank was the right name after all. It's the German name for Francis of Assisi. It's also the name of my grandmother, Francis. Like St. Francis of Assisi, may we look for openings to form human family, not only among our loved ones, but among those we see navigating the troubles of the world, even those difficult family conversations with people different of ourselves, navigating the conflicts. Like the three kings, may we too follow the star that leads us to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Peace be with you. Yes.